G'day everyone and welcome to another episode on the Riverstick server. We are back for episode 2. I really hope you enjoyed the first episode. It took a lot of work. It was a lot, a lot of content and everything just took so long to get right. But I really do hope you enjoyed it. In the last episode we built our starter house which is a nice giant mushroom. We haven't done any of the landscaping around it yet and we haven't done anything to the interior yet either. We've got a vine that's slowly, slowly growing downwards. And once that grows all the way down, that'll be our way in and out of this starter house. But as you can see, we have done absolutely nothing on the inside. We can see the inside of the mushroom, which I'm actually okay with. I quite like the look of the inside. But this floor is definitely a bit uneven and things like that. And I think that if we put a little bit of effort in, we could make this quite homely. So we're going to get that done, but we're going to do that a little bit later on in the episode. Because we need to move in completely, bring all of our stuff out of our storage in this way. And set up like a little bit of a basic storage system up there. But for now, let's head over to, to all the farms that we have over here. So from over here, we got a nice view of the mushroom in the distance there. You can see it just starts to fog out as we go further back here. But it still looks really great from over here, I think. Nothing really has changed over here since last episode. So what I've been doing in between episodes is I've been gathering a bunch of materials just over from the mushroom and from over from the farms. You can see we've just got a sort of nice area over here. And what we're going to be making is an iron farm. Now... In the last season, as you're aware, we had a pretty great iron farm. Well, this one is going to be five times as big. Oh yeah, last one was f was a total of four villages. This one is going to be 20 whole villages. It's going to be insane and produce about 9,000 iron per hour, which is roughly five and a bit shulker boxes of iron per hour. It's going to be going off. But it will have an on-off switch, so basically the idea is we'll run it when we need it, we'll just turn it off when we don't. But we'll be able to fill up our storage very quickly, and then we'll be able to shut it off for a couple of weeks, or maybe even a month or whatever, and that way it's not going crazy all the time. Because as you're aware, with me not being able to do any strip mining this season, it's going to be very hard for me to get iron any other way. And trust me, I have been struggling. I actually had to go caving for iron just to make, make two hoppers for this and make the buckets because I need I needed 10 lava buckets. So I had to go caving just to make sure that I had enough iron to do that. Now I don't have enough hoppers to, for the entire storage system that it's going to be here. Once we get this thing running and it starts churning away at the iron, 90,000 iron an hour is about 150 a minute, which means I just have to wait about a minute once it starts up and I can start making all the hoppers for it anyway. So <laughs> it's going to be crazy. So let's get straight into that. I think we could. I think we'd all love to just get straight into a time lapse of a nice epic build. Now this is going to be done in two parts. The first bit is going to be me building the iron farm, and then in a in a future episode we're going to decorate it. So for now it's just going to be a floating iron farm, kind of like we did last season. But this season I've got something special planned. So let's get into the time lapse, and I'll see you when it's done. I ran out of rails and I didn't have enough iron to get me through. So Shaden came to the rescue. Is it a mushroom in the background now? Yes, yes, that's my starter house. Just uh, <laughs> just sitting there. I haven't moved uh, in yet. I've, uh, I've still got to move all my stuff in. I've got to do that later on this episode. So, uh, Quote, unquote, starter house. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, YouTube starter house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I've got 47 unpowered rails and two powered rails. <laughs> will they help you? Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. I, I mean, they'll all help. All, all rails will help. <laughs> yeah, nice. I um, If you can get your farm started, I may need to uh, borrow a little bit of iron to get mine finished. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not a problem at all. I'm just doing a, a fairly simple one. Um, yeah. 
Waddles did an update to his one recently for uh, 1.19, so I'm just going to try that. That's, That's all you awesome. need, really. Um, I'm, I'm going to open it yeah. up an iron shop, so I wanted to sort of have the extra to ah. be able to sell. Yeah, for sure. Did you give yeah. me some name tags? Yeah, Thank I chucked a couple at your feet. Yeah, yeah, I've got a just bunch of them, so. Okay. Well, I have got my name tag. You've got some trucks, which hopefully will help you. Yeah, they'll help. Maybe soon we'll both have, have iron. <laughs> no, I know, right? It is it is absolutely yeah. atrocious. I've got literally 13 irons in my name right now. And I had to go mining for that. <laughs> oh, no. So. Uh, okay. Too easy. Oh, thanks for that. No problem, man. I'll talk to you later. Take it easy. See you later. Bye. Okay, mostly done now. This is the bulk of the farm already made. So you can see each of these cells that you can see here, that's one cell there. That's exactly what I had in the previous season. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So we've basically got five times the iron farm we had in the previous season. Now, just as a bit of a recap, every one of these corners is, is a village. So this is one village here. This is another one. This is another one. This is another one. So each of these platforms of grass over here have four villages. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20 villages. And that's how we're able to achieve about 9,000 items per hour. There's still a few things I need to do. As you can see, the rails are not connected yet. I also have to do the redstone timing circuit for the rails, which I'll get to shortly. The, f the next step here is now to bring the villagers in. Now, obviously this grass can't be here because otherwise the iron golem will spawn here and he'll just start attacking the pillager as it stands here. So, but what, I've, what I'm going to do is, rather than trying to breed up 60 villagers, yes, 60, 6, 0, that's how many villagers that this place is going to need. So rather than trying to breed up 60 villagers and then bring them all over and you know how, how villagers can be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rail system that is built here for the pillagers. I'm going to basically bring the, bring the villagers in from downstairs and sort of connect them up on these rails. And then once I've got like, say, two on each of these, that way I only need to bring 10 up here. I can then breed them. So I can breed them right here. And as long as I, if I give them enough bread, they'll just start populating. And then I can just AFK for a couple of days or something like, you know, a couple of Minecraft days and these will all fill up. And then once the babies grow into adults and they're, and they're all in their cells and it's night time, I'll then lock them in with chains and then I'll remove this entire platform. So that way they've got, they don't have anywhere to go, but their little cells. So let's go do that right now and I'll be back. Alright, the, the iron farm is coming along quite nicely, so we're still populating it out. As you can see, all the we've got lots of little kitties and adults and things like that all around. So what we need to do now is start locking them away. So there's not much we can do until they're actually all fully grown, because otherwise, see, if we lock these guys in there, little cell, that's great. But then one of these kids can get in there and they can get trapped and then all of a sudden they grow up and they become full, full grown and we've got four in a cell. Now this one over here is now, you can see it's now fully populated. I'm going to put a glass block just in case someone sleeps. I've asked people not to sleep on the server, but just in case, because you just never know in case people forget and things like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a glass block so that way if they do wake up out of their beds, they're not going to suffocate to death. So that's literally all we need to do to keep them in their little cell. And then we can break this glass. And then we can break all this floor here. I was expecting that to Instamine. You might have been able to see. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I miss Instamine already. And we've got to break this dirt from underneath as well. All right, Iron Golem, you're in my way. Thank you for your service. Okay, so that cell is done. And this is just going to make sure that they can't eject anywhere out of their beds that isn't on that one singular block. So it looks like this one. This, it looks like this one's ready to go as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get all of these guys locked up where I can. Oh! Well, that wasn't very pleasant, Mr. Iron Golem. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> so, like I was saying, I'm gonna get the rest of these all completed. Get them locked away in their own little villages. So this one, yeah, so this one still needs another two villagers. Oh, that's probably my fault because I left that there. Um, I'll keep I'll keep plodding away at this while they're growing. And while they're growing and while these little guys are growing the bigger guys and we've got more being bred as we go, 
The other thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to start putting in the glass on this layer. There needs to be glass all on this layer so that when the pillager is coming through, his head is in the glass, which means that they can't actually see him. If the villagers can't see his face, then they can't get scared by him. It's pretty much that simple. So I'm going to keep doing this, and I will and I'll see you guys once this is all when once all this glass is in. We're just making a quick detour off to the end here, real quick. Bavengo and Seb are actually building out here. You can see they made this nice little. Fr Rainbow Bridge reminds me of the Bifrost. If you if you're a Marvel fan, you'll know what that that is. But they call themselves Seb Vengo, and that's where they're going to be doing all their farms. They're going to be doing them all out over the void and things like that. It's so cool. I think I absolutely have so much respect for him for that. Uh, it's <laughs> it is absolutely crazy, but good on him. But we are here for one very important thing, which is to collect and pay for this. The Vengo's got a gunpowder farm. We need gunpowder so that we can fly. And we are trading a whole sugar box of gunpowder for a whole sugar box of sugarcane. But I'm not going to lie. I want to be a little sneaky about it. So what we're going to do is going to hide a barrel underneath there. We're going to chuck this sugarcane in here, just like that, with this little sign here saying, just kidding. It's up to Sim. <laughs> All right. So this is, this is a little barrel. All right. That's 12 stacks of sugarcane. And the reason we need that is because I've got this shulker box for him. So I'd, I'm taking this full shulker box here of sugar of gunpowder. And I'm giving him this full sugar. This one here. Subscribe to Ozcrafter Sim in the, <laughs> this is the rename, of course. Of course I've got to put that on there. Which, by the way, if you're not subbed, hit that sub button now. <laughs> so, we got the full sugar box of sugar cane and budget sugar cane. <laughs> So there is twelve. There is twelve more uh, stacks of sugar cane below it, but he'll get here, and that's what he's going to see. So let's just cover that up so he doesn't see it straight away, and we can leave this area, and we'll let him know. I'll let him know on Discord that I've made my payment, and when he comes down here, he'll see the sugar box, and he'll just see this <laughs> the budget sugar cane. Oh, it's fantastic! Oh. All right, let's go back to the base. Well, this is my life now. Just rowing a boat on the bedrock on the roof of the nether, being shot at by a pillager whose aim is terrible, and he keeps just shooting him in the ground. This is fantastic. Look, he, he can't actually hit me. <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. Spider Watermelon told me about this. Apparently, if you have a pillager in, a, in the same boat as you, he can shoot you all he wants, and he can't actually hit you, but he's wearing out his bow this entire time. So once he's worn out his bow, and, and he's been pacified, We'll be able to stick him into the iron farm, and the iron farm will be churning away big time. <laughs> He's found it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he didn't realise he found it. He's, he was just like, oh, he just chucked bamboo in there, whatever. And then he's realised. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, BV, I hope you, I hope you enjoy your your sugar cane and your budget sugar cane. It, it was it was fun for me. <laughs> All right, let's turn this on. Yeah, now you can hit me. So we got to be a bit careful here. We're gonna run through the portal, and he's gonna try and get closer. Then he's gonna go through the portals. So we've got the villager, we got the pillager back. We are watching him shoot us, and he's full on. Look at this guy. He's like Hawkeye. He aims that way. Boom! He shoots me in the face. Aims that way. Boom! Shoots me in the face. Every time. But I'm gonna hop back in the boat so he stops shooting me. <laughs> oh! That, that looks very painful. That looks, that looks very painful. So, he, he shouldn't be too far away from breaking his crossbow. Once that's done, we'll go and stick him in the farm, and the iron farm should be ready to go. The farm is now fully functional. 
There's a couple of very small minor details I want to still do to it. But let's just empty this for a second. You can see it's all just piling in super fast. I have to keep emptying it because this is the entire storage at the moment. <laughs> you can just see it just keeps going. All right, let's 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 just empty that. All right, so that's empty now. Now let's have a look. Let's start a five minute timer. And in that time, I'll take a little bit of time to explain what is going on over here. Now there's a few minor details, but essentially what you can see is this. Most of the time, especially during the night, the villagers are not being scared. They, they can sleep and they can get the sleep in. They need to sleep at least once every two days for them to be able to spawn in iron golems. Now this whole farm is a nem bomb design. A couple of very tiny details change, which is I put these little barriers around them, the little mud barriers around them, just because uh, I've, I, I, I had a problem where they were falling out of the bed and they ended up falling down into the lava below. We don't want that to happen, so I've put these little barriers around. What I've also done is I've put the... I've put the carpet on top of the glass here because since 1.19, iron golems can now spawn on glass. Once he pops in here, he was, he, the pillager's going to sit there for five, for five seconds. They all wake up. They go, ah, I'm scared. Iron golems spawn, and then he moves on to the next cell. They've now got a 30-second cooldown. So while they're on their cooldown, pillager comes over here, scares this lot. They spawn in iron golems, and then he goes over there. Same thing, and this just continues going. One pillager for 20 individual villagers. And sometimes, like that one there, see, we only got three iron golems, that one we got two. Most of the time when I've been watching this, I'm getting three to four almost every time. So because it is a bit random, there's, there's only three that time, but because it is random, the rates will vary massively from, from hour to hour or from whatever. But if you average it over the long term, it, it'll be pretty accurate. That time was only one. But over here, we got three village. We got three iron golems. Over there, we spawned four, three, two, two, and he's just going to keep cycling around. So that's five minutes. Let's have a look what we've got. In five minutes, we've got about seven stacks of iron. I had a couple of those in my inventory already. Sorry, I just need to get away from the mobs so I don't die. Uh, I'll land on the fence. Oh no, I won't. I'll fly again. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to review my footage and I'll tell you exactly how much we had. So I've just reviewed the footage and it was the 7 stacks in 5 minutes. It seemed to give about 150 drops a minute, but that includes the poppies as well. So it's probably about 100 iron, about a, about 50 poppies, give or take. Um, but I literally, this is just me from me reviewing that footage and I got, did get a little bit distracted in the chat um, on the server. But apart from that, yeah, there is, as you can see, there's so much, there's so much coming in. So this storage is just not going to cut it. So what I'm going to do, I've just started digging this area here out. I'm going to just put a pretty large storage system just here under the ground for now. The whole idea of this farm is that I want it to just basically run in the background for a couple of days and then I'll turn it off. And then whenever I need it, I can just turn it on or I can AFK there or whatever. But the idea is that it's not going to be constantly causing lag on the server because it's not going to be running all the time. So now that we have an iron farm that's just churning away, it's just pumping in the iron in. Um, I've built a little, the, quite a large storage area. This, you'll notice this is a lot bigger than the previous one I had last season. It's because this iron farm is really going to pump out the iron. It's like, it hasn't been running for all that long. We've already got almost two and a half double chests. Not only that, but it's, we've, we're also getting plenty of poppies. I mean, we've already got over a full shulker box, essentially, of poppies. Uh, we'll only have two double chests of poppies in here. And then it's going to just start going through this composter which will essentially just turn it into bone meal. So once these are both filled, we're going to have a ridiculous amount of bone meal coming in as well. Now, we still have to do a bit of a clean up here, and like I said, there's a big upgrade coming to this later on, but that up upgrade is going to have to wait for now. I have to do a big clean up here. We've got all the junk still sitting here from from the, from the building all of this. And <clears throat> from building this. And my chest back over here are all full of junk, but it all needs to be moved into that house. The problem is, it's very hard to do when you only have a couple of shulkers. So what I might do is I might just pop over to the end, go grab some shulkers, maybe a couple of spare elytras, because I currently only have one elytra, and I'll see you when I, once I'm done. I'm back from the end, I was there for maybe an hour, maybe a little bit longer possibly, and uh, this is what I basically got. I've got a bunch of stuff in here, we got a lot of armor, let me just sort this real quick. Much better. So we've got a bunch of armor, mostly chest plates, which sort of, which is kind of annoying because obviously when you got an elytra, you don't bother wearing them. 
But we've got a few here, and some of them actually have good, like that one there. Protection 4 is actually really good. Protection 4 there. We've got 12 diamonds out of the chest. Uh, we've also got some diamond armor, a couple of heads, and, and of course we've got these tools. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Over here, we got ourselves five brand new elytras. One of them I had to use. I did die once. I had to use a spare one to get back over there. We got just over a stack of shulker shells. So that'll be 36 additional shulker boxes. Better than the eight I currently have. So that's going to be very helpful, especially when it comes to time for, time for us to move into the mushroom. And then, of course, we've got some chests and some end rods. Nothing crazy there. So now that we've got these extra shulker boxes, let's pack all of this up and let's finally move into the starter base. At the moment, the inside is pretty pretty plain and basic. We've just got some terracotta and we've got a little bit of brown mushroom block. It's, it's a little bit awkward to get around. So I think what we need to do, the first thing we need to do is just figure out a bit of a layout. Where are our chests going to go? Where's our bed going to go? And a few other things like that. We also need to chop down the vine here and put it one more block over because I've made a mistake. And that's going to fall down basically to here, which when we come in, it's not going to help us get up because we won't be able to get to it. So I need to move it. You can see where my crosshairs are there. Just one block back. I just put it in the wrong spot in the first place. So I'm going to go pack this stuff up. And let's give this place a nice bit of decoration. All right, the interior is done. You want to go see? Let's go check it out. So first of all, I've moved the vine over. Uh, as you know, I told you that it was in the wrong spot. So I've moved that over. So now it can take us all the way up to the top. And here it is. This mushroom, we've got three separate levels. So I'll take you through each level and we'll sort of have a bit of a talk. This is my main storage room. So there is a lot of chests and barrels and things like that. I've tried to make it sort of interesting and not just, you know, a, a big row of chests. So here's what we got. Let's start with the middle row here over here, the middle floor. So this is basically all of our major building materials. So you got all the different types of stone, all the diorite, granite, all that. Over here we've got tough basalt and black stone. Over here we've got calcite, we've got deep slate, obsidian, and te all the terracotta here, concrete underneath down the bottom there, all in this sort of area here. We've also got, we made these pillars that are holding the floors up out of barrels. So we actually have, we've got have sand, gravel, grass, and dirt, all here in a pillar. Now on, and on this side, we've got a few other things. Now over here we've got our gunpowder up here. Uh, sugar cane there which makes rockets and we've got TNT as well. We've got tons of TNT. Look at it um, Over here, we've got logs planks chest shulkers and all the random stuff that's all made out of wood Got quite a few shulker boxes now. I've had to chuck a few in here because they wouldn't fit now On that note most of these things you're probably thinking Sim, I've seen your storage last season. There is no way you're gonna be able to keep all your, all your dirt in one chest or all your gravel in one chest. And that goes for just about everything here. You're absolutely right. But I am going to be, whenever I can, I'll be packing everything up into shulker boxes and putting it in here. And just remember, this is a starter base. We will be upgrading this like later on down the track and we'll be doing a much, much larger storage with that. Let's go to the top floor. The top floor is pretty empty right now. I've left it this way on purpose because I want to have an option for a little bit of an expansion or as, as time goes by and I figure th things that I have to do, I'll start, I can add them up here, which is fantastic. I've got my bed here, so that's my spawn. Over here, I've got my two brewing stands, and I've got some barrels over here with all my brewing stuff, and things like that. If we come back downstairs, you can see we've got this beautiful iron anvil balustrade. Down the bottom, we've got the same thing, and then we've got a two dragon eggs on the end. I wanted to make sure they're on display, and I thought, you know what, they fit in really well up. Now, if we go down to the bottom floor over here, it, this, this is basically all the other items. So not the things you use for building, but more the things you use for decorating or the redstone and things like that. So this is all like the redstone corner and things like that. This is all the different heads. So we've got mob heads, we've got mini block heads, which I don't have any yet, and we've got a few player heads, which, you know, happen like this one. <laughs> uh, we've got some... Oh, I've got another TNT box. Nope. We've got redstone related stuff here, slime, honey, quartz, and so on and so forth. As we come around this side, we start getting more towards our food, our, di our iron and gold, um, as well as a bunch of other stuff as well. And of course, over here, we've got like all our nature stuff, which is just, you know, so when we want to do this, that's just for leaves. These are like all our plants and roots and things like that. And then of course, we've got saplings. And then on this side, we have like mob drops, nether stuff, and miscellaneous is in this box here. Oh, and of course we've got moss. Now obviously most of these are empty. Another cool little feature that I've added to this 
is this little trap door here. If we open it up, we got some water here, but it is actually an infinite water supply. So you can see, I can just keep taking it and it will keep refilling. So that gives us some infinite water whenever we need it, right there at our feet. So if I need water buckets, I can fill them up before I go. Now we've got an ender chest on each floor. We've got crafting tables tucked away in the corners. We've got a grindstone over here. So we've got pretty much everything we need. And I think it's turned out really good. Now I haven't done anything up the top here because I want I don't want this to be a focus point. I want this to be like we put our back here and we're looking into the base from here. And we can see the first, second, and third floors. From this spot, you can see you've got a really great view of the entire base. And I think it's just turned out all right. So let me know down in the comments if I've missed anything or if you think I need to add anything extra. But I do think that it's turned out really well. That is sadly all I have time for today. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. I'm Oz Crafter Sim. Thanks for stopping by. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later.